on November 16th of 1987, Star Trek The Next Generation finally gave us a glimpse into Captain Picard's past. Well, let's get moving with my retrospective review of Star Trek The Next Generation Episode 9, The Battle. Under orders from Starfleet, the Enterprise rendezvous with a Ferengi vessel. Repeated hailing attempts by the Enterprise to the Ferengi are met with the simple response, Stand by Enterprise. Meanwhile, Dr. Crusher visits Captain Picard, who is complaining of having a headache and exhaustion. At this point in the future, headaches are rather unusual and are a bit of a cause for concern. Dr. Crusher wants to run more tests on the Captain, but duty calls when the Ferengi finally hail the Enterprise. Picard goes to the bridge where he communicates with the Ferengi daemon named Bach. Bach insists that they communicate further in person. While waiting for the daemon to transport over to the Enterprise, Captain Picard goes to the sick bay in order to get diagnosed for his headache. Crusher is unable to find any problem with the captain, but gives him some painkillers. Back on the bridge, Wesley informs the other crew members that the long-range sensors have detected a Constellation-class starship heading in their direction. It has not responded to any hailing attempts. Bach and two subordinates beam over to the Enterprise bridge. Bach seems to know Captain Picard, and refers to him as the Hero of Maxia. Data surmises that the Hero of Maxia is a reference to an event that happened nine years earlier when Captain Picard, under the command of the Stargazer, was attacked by an unknown ship. As it turns out, this was a Ferengi ship. Under the protests of his crew, the Daemon gives the gift of the Constellation-class starship to the Enterprise. At no cost? Very ugly. As it turns out, the Constellation-class ship is in fact the USS Stargazer, Captain Picard's old command, and the ship he used during the Battle of Maxia. In the observation lounge, the captain tells the story of what happened during the Battle of Maxia to the other crew. He was attacked by the unknown ship, he was unaware that it was the Ferengi at the time, and executed something called the Picard Maneuver. This maneuver is essentially a short warp jump, which shows for a brief instant two ships on the enemy's view screen. Card used a momentary distraction to destroy the Ferengi ship. Card would later abandon the Stargazer, believing the ship unsalvageable. An away team secures the Stargazer before Captain Card beams over. Once there, he takes a look around, then proceeds to his cabin in order to retrieve some belongings he left behind. Captain Picard is hit with another bout of fierce headaches and is forced to return back to the Enterprise. Meanwhile, a large sphere glows among his belongings. Poking around in the computer system, Data discovers the Captain's log. Data finds a log which appears to implicate Captain Picard as being the aggressor during the fight. This is immediately understood to be fraudulent. What's not understood is the motivation the Ferengi would have for producing such a fraudulent log. Picard's headache gets worse where he returns to his quarters and Crusher gives him a sedative so he can sleep it off. Picard awakes and has a brief hallucination, reliving the events of the battle. Claiming the rest to have done the trick, Captain Picard returns to duty and orders the tractor beam towing the Stargazer to be disengaged. Captain Picard beams over to the Stargazer just in time for Dr. Crusher to discover that the brainwave patterns she had been reading in his head were identical to the signals that her son Wesley has been reading from out in space. On board the Stargazer, Picard meets Bach. As it turns out, it was Bach's son that was commanding the ship that attacked the Stargazer. Although he was clearly the aggressor, Bach blames Captain Picard for the death of his son the mind control sphere would be used to control Captain Picard and force him to relive the Battle of Maxia. Taking command of the Stargazer, he would attack the Enterprise, forcing the Enterprise to destroy him, granting Bach his revenge. Worf finds the mind control sphere in Picard's quarters and brings it to Riker. Riker questions the first officer of the Ferengi ship, who is visibly distressed. Citing an unprofitable venture, the first officer imprisons Damon Bach over this. On board the Stargazer, Picard goes full crazy and attempts to attack the Enterprise using the same Picard maneuver. Data devises a way of overcoming the Picard maneuver and immobilizes the Stargazer with the tractor beam. Riker convinces the Captain to destroy the Thought Maker with his phaser, thus ending Bach's control over him. When dealing with the rather shaky first season of TNG, you kind of have to take what you can get. 
So while this episode isn't great by any means, it's also not terrible. It's one of those episodes that tries to go and build up some kind of mystery, make you think about what's going on, try to figure out what's going on, but unfortunately I feel like it falls on its face when it comes to that. It tries to create some kind of mystery like what's going on with the captain, what are the Ferengi up to, all that kind of stuff. It seems pretty obvious though that the Ferengi are responsible for Picard's headaches, his hallucinations and all that, and in fact you even see the red glowing orb, and it's pretty obvious that Damon Bach is up to something. It's going to be pretty clear to anybody who's been watching that Captain Picard didn't intentionally destroy that Ferengi ship nine years earlier. It's going to be pretty clear that the Ferengi are responsible for his headaches and his hallucinations. And it's going to be pretty clear even that the box motivation for what he's doing is revenge for the Battle of Maxia. The only thing that actually comes as a bit of a surprise was that it was his son that was the captain of the Ferengi ship that attacked nine years earlier, and that's what he was getting revenge for. But overall, that's just kind of a minor detail in the overall story. Perhaps I am just looking into it too much, nitpicking a bit too much, but the Picard maneuver doesn't make any sense to me. All it is is a short warp jump that creates the illusion of being two ships being on the enemy ship's sensors at the same time, but it's going to be pretty obvious which one is the real one and which one is the fake one, and having a momentary distraction like that, even if they couldn't tell which one was real and which one was fake, would only give you a 50-50 chance of having the enemy ship's fire focused on an illusion for a couple of seconds. Not any real significant tactical advantage in a world where battles like this can go on for minutes. Beyond that, it seems as though the Enterprise-D should have had a number of different ways of incapacitating the Stargazer without actually destroying it, giving me the impression that they're using this situation to drum up a lot of suspense out of a situation that doesn't warrant it. On the better side of things, this episode does give us a better portrayal of the Ferengi as opposed to their weird orangutan-like actions that they showed in the previous episode, The Last Outpost. These seem more real, more human to me, than the weird goofballs we had seen before. Overall, it's not good. It's not terrible. 2 out of 5. <laughs>